Welcome to Goldfish on Games, and today I want to talk about a game that's been on my mind for over 20 years. That game is Wetlands. And the reason that I want to talk to you about it is that I got it as a demo with my PC back in 96. And it seems such a generational leap above what I was used to playing on my Amiga 500 Plus and my ZX Spectrum. And just recently I actually managed to get a big box copy of it and play the game from beginning to end. Because up until that point, all I'd experienced was that demo. It stuck with me that much though, that it's been one of those games I've always wanted to play and talk about. When we look at the box and the packaging, I really like the fact that on the back it's mostly focused on the cutscenes rather than gameplay and really does go out of its way to talk about all the great animations and characters and everything and little about the actual gameplay itself. And this isn't entirely surprising as I get the feeling that it was mostly sold on that animation, that cutscenes and the story. The gameplay was for the most part secondary to everything else because just look at this intro. I still love that intro and I think the cell animation just looks wonderful and really has helped it not age anywhere near as badly as other games of its time. If they used live actors or if the whole thing was 3D rendered I think it would have looked far far worse. With a game that's prided itself so much on its videos and its story it's unsurprising to see that carried through the manual, just look at it. Almost every page in this manual is just a comic book. There's only a couple of pages in the middle that is actually for how you play the game. They just expected you to know how to do it. The rest of it is this great little story that tells you how Wetlands came to be. And in fact the installation guide probably has more information on the game than any other part of the manual. Thankfully the game is simple enough that you don't really need much of a manual anyway. For the most part it's an on-rail shooter but using pre-rendered video as the backgrounds. And with what looks like the enemies and other objects also being videos, but being blended on top. In most instances, this actually looked quite good, and they even went out of their way to allow you to pan the camera around slightly so you could better see enemies from the side and get better lines of targets on them. Now, the action isn't all that varied. You shoot chips in space, you shoot ships in water, you shoot people on foot, you shoot robots on foot. It's shooting, shooting and a little bit more shooting. Sometimes at targets that flash very brightly, other times at bad guys. And even when there's extra objectives in a mission, it tends to just be shoot a flashing target. It might be with your regular gun. But other instances it might be with a one-shot torpedo, which can be very finickety in its targeting. On the subject of your main gun, you have two modes of fire. You have the regular, which is you shoot as fast as you can mash the button, and you've got a secondary, which is a rapid fire, but you only have a limited amount of energy for it, and that lasts the entire mission even if it's broken up into multiple segments. The challenge comes in the form of your shielding. So you can take a few hits, but it will very quickly drain down if you do not take targets out. 
even though it does recharge over time, it's still very quick to go down if you don't pay attention. Now one of the bigger challenges of the game is probably just the flight path the game takes. They really did use that video the best that they could and some of the action takes place in weird sort of corkscrews, fast sweeps across the landscape moving at quite a high click. So you really have to be on the ball and very quick with your reactions to be able to hit some of those targets because you'll only see them for a very brief amount of time. Even when the targets are static on the ground and have big flashing indicators of where you've got to shoot a la Star Fox, you'll probably be flying across it at quite a large speed so trying to hit those smaller targets is quite difficult and if you make a mistake and you screw up then you lose a life. This game amazingly has a life system and if you lose all your lives you lose your score but then you just continue from where you were. There doesn't seem to be much in the way of real penalty to dying though that might change on some of the harder difficulty levels. They do try to mix the gameplay up in a number of ways the best they can with the type of technology. So some of the missions end up being a bit of a maze where you're running down in first person and have to pick the direction you want to go. And you have to try and work out the layout of the maze to get through to the other side. Some of these are quite fun, others can be just quite tricky and you have to play a lot of times to be able to work out the correct route because you actually end up being timed on some of them. But the biggest variation of the basic gameplay is the drone level. Now this was a killing point for a lot of people's plays of this game. Because the drone, even though it's a top down, almost shoot em up style affair, handles like a drunk cat on an ice rink. It's not fun to control with a joystick or a mouse. It will just keep moving, it just does not control the way you'd expect. Now it's possible they did that on purpose to make sure that it wasn't too easy but it just really does not feel fun and I think they realised that the controls wasn't great because they actually give you two attempts at doing the mission for each life because they felt it was unfair just to give you the one. With the story being so important to this game it feels wrong to really try and spoiler it too much. So here's the basics. In the future Mankind has ended up melting the polar ice caps by testing nuclear weapons. Way to go. And this has created an entirely flooded Earth. And because of that, Mankind left for the stars and left Earth behind. But not all of Mankind left. Some stayed and ended up turning Earth, which got renamed the Wetlands, into a horrible den of vice and bad guts. While Mankind are out at the stars, they end up forming into two major factions, who, unsurprisingly, are now at war with each other. It's in the midst of this war that a scientist gets broken out of a prison, and you, as a bounty hunter, has been sent after it. And that is where the game starts. As you can see, currently we're trying to fight our way down to the planet so we can go in our submarine and rescue the scientist. Or at least capture him so we can put him back in prison again. There are quite a reasonable number of levels, but with the mission difficulty ranging from medium to very hard, you know you're going to be in for a challenge on most levels. But if you're particularly good at the game, you could probably finish it in a couple of hours. But the rest of us, it'll probably take quite a bit longer, because you have to try and memorise attack patterns, work out the best route through some of the mazes, as well as work out the terrible controls for the drone. But at its core, it is an FMV rail shooter which were all the rage for a while, but quickly seemed to burn out. I think mostly due to the fact that they were quite limited in what they could actually do. And when you'd played one, you'd seen most of the features that were in the others. It was really just down to stories, and not many of them actually even had that. And at a time when graphics were rapidly improving, all the time, year on year, the sort of advanced and incredible looking games that were using these FMV footages were very quickly becoming outdated and so we were starting to have to do this in real time or we'll do more impressive things like we were with Doom and so the time of the rail shooter was very limited but I think Hypnotics and New World Order really made one of the better titles in this genre of games mostly because they tried to tell a cool and interesting story 
with their own twists and tales and a few changes in the gameplay. Now these days trying to get a copy of the game is quite hard. It's not up on any of the download sites, you can't find it on GOG or anything like that. Instead you have to look at abandonware sites or as I did find a copy on eBay. They seem to show up semi-regularly and for quite a varying degrees of prices. People are never sure what this game is worth and I'm quite happy I managed to get that copy for a reasonable price and it works beautifully in both my Windows 98 and my DOS machine as well as in DOSBox. So if you do get a copy there are plenty of ways of playing it. Well hopefully you can see why this game has been in my mind for all those years and hopefully you'll give it a go as well because I think it is a pretty fun game. And so until next time I've been the Goldfish, that is Wetlands and this has been Goldfish on Games.